Today's a really exciting day because not only did I find this giant mushroom behind me, but it's the day that the Pocket 3 is coming out along with nine new accessories for it. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you more about it, gonna give you 15 reasons why it's a better buy over the original Pocket 2, and we're also gonna be filming a lot with it. I'm gonna film a lot of side-by-side -side comparisons to the Pocket 2 and also have a lot of standalone footage because I've had it for about a month to test out. And spoiler alert, it's definitely been worth the wait. By the way, DJI did send this camera for me to test out, but they did not pay me to say anything. This is an unsponsored video. And before I dig into the new things about this camera, I'll talk about a few things that haven't changed. For one, this is still a miniature camera on top of a gimbal, which is a physical stabilizer. And it can shoot a maximum of 4K 60 frames per second. But the image quality, as you'll soon find out, has really been improved from the Pocket 2. And it has a 20 millimeter F2 lens equivalent. This is also still not a waterproof or crush proof camera so you do want to be a little bit more careful with it. So the first thing you should know about the Pocket 3 is that it is physically bigger than the Pocket 2. I mean it's still pocket sized if you have relatively big pockets but it is noticeably thicker around the handle and also heavier. The Pocket 3 is about the same height as my iPhone 15 Pro but it's even lighter than my phone. But one benefit to a bigger overall size is that the display screen is bigger. In fact, the Pocket 3's display is 4.7 times bigger than the Pocket 2's display. It's now an OLED display that is two inches across, and it is really bright and useful for not only framing your shots, but also reviewing them after you shoot them and navigating the menu. By the way, if you're scrolling through the menu of this camera, you might notice that it looks very similar to the Osmo Action 4. I really like that they updated it because it's much easier to navigate, especially if you're familiar with the Osmo Action 4. It's also really nice because if you flip it into the horizontal position, that powers the camera on. And if you flip it back into vertical, it powers it off. So it's really fast and easy to start the camera up. Now, similar to the Pocket 1 and Pocket 2, you can connect the Pocket 3 to a phone and use the DJI Mimo app to preview your shot as you're recording it and even control the camera as a remote control. However, you can no longer physically attach your phone to the camera like you could on previous versions. So like the Pocket 2, it had like this little joystick and button uh, little piece that you could slide out and replace that with the phone connector. You can't do that anymore with the Pocket 3, but honestly, I think that's a good thing because I always found that little piece in the Pocket 2 and Pocket 1 to be very easy to lose. So it's no longer, you know, another thing that you have to keep track of. The third thing to know about the Pocket 3 is that it now has a bigger sensor. It's a one inch sensor that is much bigger than the one over 1.7 inch sensor that we had in the Pocket 2. And let me tell you, I see a giant difference in image quality. In normal lighting conditions, there is more dynamic range, there's less noise, the colors are better, and there's still a lot of detail in your shot. Now, like I mentioned earlier, the Pocket 3 is still capped at a maximum of 4K 60 frames per second, which for me is plenty. I never really shoot beyond that anyway. And the other thing though, is that because of the bigger sensor, we have upgraded slow motion. So on the Pocket 2, we were capped at 1080p for 120 frames and 240 frames per second slow-mo. Now in the Pocket 3, we can shoot at 4K 120 frames per second slow motion. Super slow motion is still capped at 1080p, but honestly, having 4K 120 is, in my opinion, a pretty big upgrade for this camera. And to me, the image quality looks really good at that resolution. But the biggest benefit to having that one inch sensor is really seen in low light shooting. The Pocket 2 is pretty decent in low light compared to other smaller cameras, but the Pocket 3 footage, like when you see them side by side, I see way less noise or grain in the Pocket 3 shot. The image is overall brighter, there's more detail, the colors are better. I mean, the Pocket 3 just blows the Pocket 2 out of the water in that low light image quality. Now on the Pocket 3, I think the low light footage looks really good shooting in normal video mode, but it also has a brand new low light video mode that you can shoot in. It does drop your frame rate down to 30 frames per second. You can still shoot in 4K. And I think the image quality still looks pretty good. But, you know, I don't see too much of a difference between shooting in normal video mode and low light mode, but it's there as an option. Speaking of video modes in the Pocket 3, there is that new low light mode that I just mentioned, but there's also an added live stream mode. You can live stream in up to 1080p, 24 frames per second on the Pocket 3. And you can also use this camera as a webcam, which is pretty cool because the little gimbal camera will follow you around the shot. But the Pocket 3 does take away one mode, which is HDR video mode that you had on the Pocket 2. 
but you can still shoot in HDR. If you go over to Pro Mode and navigate over to Color, you can choose between Normal, HLG 10-bit, and D-Log M 10-bit. HLG stands for Hybrid Log Gamma. We're shooting on it right now, and you can see that it's basically HDR. Like, the dynamic range is a lot better, and it's even available in 10-bit and 4K 60 frames per second in the Pocket 3, which is already an upgrade because the Pocket 2, even though it had HDR video, it was limited to shooting at 2.7K 30 frames per second. So, a pretty big upgrade all around. Now, as for D-Log M, that's something brand new on this camera. It replaces d Tone, which is found on the Pocket 2. And d Tone was also limited on the Pocket 2. You could only shoot it up to 4K 30 frames per second. With D-Log M, you can shoot it up to 4K 60 frames per second on the Pocket 3. And if you're not familiar with it, it's essentially a flat color profile that preserves a lot more of your dynamic range, lowers your sharpness, and just gives you more editing control of that file in post-production. D-Log M is also something that was brand new in the Osmo Action 4, so pretty cool to see that it's coming out on more of DJI's compact cameras. Something else that's brand new in the Pocket 3 is Active Track. It's been upgraded to version 6.0 in the Pocket 3, and you can now do it in 4K 60. It was Active Track 3.0 in the Pocket 2, and you could not do 4K 60 with it. So it's a lot faster, it's more responsive, it's very easy to enable. I'm actually going to go ahead and enable it right now. Just going to double tap my face on the screen and then we're going to start moving and see just how well it can track me. Oh, I see it. It's doing pretty good. I'm going to try to go all the way around the camera. There is a bit of a limit, but if I jump back into the frame, it'll automatically pick me up. It's doing pretty good. Let's go side to side. Let's go down, let's go up. I don't know about you guys, but I think that was pretty cool. It's like having a little cameraman with you, but it's built into the camera. All right, and now to compare, this is the Pocket 2. We're gonna enable active track. Again, not available in 4K 60, but we can do it in 4K 30. And here's what it's like. Whoops, that's a hole. Oh, it already lost me. Hey, oh, won't get me back. All right, face track again. I think it already lost me. <laughs> well, I think it's safe to say that active track is way better in the Pocket 3 than it is in the Pocket 2. <laughs> There's also a brand new autofocus mode on the Pocket 3 called Product Showcase. So first of all, I'm gonna talk about the first two focus modes which are also found on the Pocket 2. That's single focus as well as continuous focus. Continuous focus is really great if you've got a moving subject. So I'm gonna move around a bit and both cameras actually do a pretty good job. Pocket 3 does a better job of tracking me as I'm coming in and out of the frame. And now with product showcase, it's really important for times when you're making a product review video like I do all the time. So a lot of times you'll have a product like this iPhone 15 Pro and I might want to talk about it, but you might notice that the camera is preferring to focus on me or a face as opposed to the product. I have to bring the product really close up front in order for the camera to you know, recognize it. If we're on the same plane, it's not really focusing on the product so much. So now I've got product showcase enabled. So anytime I bring a product into frame, I don't have to have it directly up front, although it still will do that as well, but I can have it you know, further back here. And you should still be able to see that product really well, even if we're on the same plane. Should be more or less in focus you know, the whole time. This would actually be a really great thumbnail shot right here for the iPhone. Related to Active Track, the Pocket 3 also has smart gimbal modes, which you can easily get to by swiping left from the touch screen. But it has things like face auto detect, in which it'll focus on the face that is closest to the center of the frame. Kind of hard to demonstrate right now. I really need a buddy. So if you have two people in the shot, I think it demonstrates it a lot better. But it also has something called dynamic framing. So you push on the joystick to switch the focus frame, to lock in the subject in the center, or to set a position so that the camera will automatically focus focus on that little section. And there's also the spin shot mode for getting a 90 degree or 180 degree rotation of a subject, which is pretty nice to have that automated because I can tell you from experience that it's pretty hard to get that right just by controlling the gimbal by yourself. 
The next thing to know about the Pocket 3 is that it now has Wi-Fi built in, because on the Pocket 2, you had to have a separate module in order to add Wi-Fi to the camera. You can also add your own external microphone directly to the Pocket 3 by connecting it to the USB-C port that's on the bottom. Now this feature is optimized for the DJI wireless microphone in particular. You can actually take that little receiver and just swap out the little clip for the USB-C connector and connect that little receiver directly to the bottom of the Pocket 3 and then you'll have a wireless transmitter or two that you can use. And this is what it sounds like using the original DJI wireless microphone. It's attached to the Pocket 3 and I'm using the transmitter right now to record the sound. But if you are using another external microphone that might require a cold shoe mount, I recommend using the brand new DJI expansion adapter to add that cold shoe adapter to the side of the Pocket 3 handle. Now speaking of sound, the Pocket 3 does have three built-in microphones all around the camera, and they do a pretty good job of picking up sound. This is a microphone test of both cameras. We're shooting in all directions for the microphone when reduction is on, and we're using the built-in internal microphones. Right now the camera is about an arm's length away, so this is what it sounds like if I'm standing on the side of the camera with the joysticks and the buttons. I'm gonna go ahead and move around the cameras. So now I'm on the other side of the cameras, and this is what it sounds like if I'm standing here. Uh, there is an airplane kind of going overhead, so we'll see if uh, that is interfering at all. Actually, a pretty good noise test. So again, standing on this side of the camera, arm's length away with that airplane going overhead in the semi-far distance. This is what it sounds like with uh, both of these cameras using the internal microphones. Now the cool thing about both of these cameras is that there's like a creator combo version that will ship with a wireless microphone, or in the case of the Pocket 3, you can actually get two transmitters with it. Right now I only have one transmitter to demonstrate, but both of these are wireless mics, so I'm going to go ahead and pair these up and we can hear the difference when we're using these instead. All right, so pairing these microphones was super easy. Just had to power them on and they automatically connected. You know, I'm holding them both right here. They've got the furry windscreens on. So that windscreen is offering us a lot of uh, protection from any wind that might come by. And of course, the benefit of having these wireless microphones is that I can walk around the camera. I can be on the other side of it. And, you know, the camera isn't even facing me. We've even got some people walking by and, you know, talking a little bit, but you should still be able to hear me pretty well because these microphones are directly beneath my mouth. Another neat feature about the Pocket 3 is that it now includes natural skin tone face priority. And so what it does is it automatically detects the skin tone of the subject that you're filming and it adjusts the exposure and the light to make that skin tone look good in a bunch of different lighting conditions. And so I'm gonna rotate around right now. We've got a lot of variable light in this forest and I think my skin looks pretty good. I definitely think it's a big upgrade over the Pocket 2, which Martin and I both agree never really made our skin look good. So I like to see that feature on the Pocket 3. It's really great for vlogging in particular. Along those lines, DJI is also giving us control over sharpness, which I love seeing on these compact cameras because a lot of them struggle from over sharpening. So I like having control over the sharpness. You can have it set to default or even zero sharpness. You can go up to one or two sharpness. I don't really recommend doing that because I think it produces an over sharpened look, which is kind of a cheap quality to a lot of videos out there. Or you can actually go down to negative one or negative two sharpness. And I like to hover in those areas and add my sharpness in post-production if I feel like it's needed. Another vlogging related feature that was added to the Pocket 3 is actually one of the accessories, and that is a black mist filter. It's an optional accessory, you have to purchase it, and it fits right on top of the little camera lens, kind of like that wide angle filter lens. And it's really nice for being able to control your highlight flares and reduce some skin blemishes and details on your face. I really like it. I've actually been using it to film the majority of this video. I'm using it right now. And I think it's a really great addition for those of you that want to use this camera for vlogging. It is a really small and lightweight piece, so you want to be sure to keep track of it. But there's a nice little notch inside of the included Pocket 3 protective handle or cover that lets you store the little filter inside of it. So a really nice add-on for those of us that want to vlog with this camera. 
Now the final little vlogging related feature on the Pocket 3 is something called Glamour Effects. It was available in the Pocket 2, but only in up to 1080p resolution. You can now do Glamour Effects in 4K in the Pocket 3. And it's something that not all of you may want to use, but for me and other female vloggers out there in particular, uh, it's something that I don't mind having as an option. So it's something that you have to enable in the camera and actually apply them through the DJI Mimo app on your phone, but it gives you some control over glamour effects on your face. Things like smoothing out the lines in your skin, maybe adding lipstick if you forgot to put some on, or adding some extra makeup if you forgot to put it on. And again, not all of you are going to find this attractive, but for me personally, I like having it there as an option, just in case I forgot to add my lipstick or something before I went out to film. All right, we're almost there. This is one of the last features to talk about, and that is the battery life. So it's improved on the Pocket 3. You can now shoot at 160 minutes at 1080p, 24 frames per second, which is an increase from 140 minutes on the Pocket 2. There's also quick charging support if you use the uh, optional quick charging accessory, and you can get like fully charged in a little over half an hour, which is pretty nice. And the battery is still built into the camera, so if it does die, you can't swap it out for a new battery. But there is now this little battery handle, which comes with the Creator Combo. And this gives you 62% more battery if you have it plugged into the bottom of the Pocket 3. So it's not quite the same as being able to swap out the battery, but it's kind of a workaround. So it's nice to have, you know, if you need all day constant power, you could stock up on several of these and be able to power this camera for more than that 160 minute limit. And the last thing to know about the Pocket 3 is the price. Uh, unsurprisingly, the price of this camera has gone up compared to the Pocket 2, and that's not too much of a surprise considering we're now getting that one inch sensor. I think we all know that getting a one inch sensor in a small camera is going to make the price go up. So it's now $519 to get the standard combo, or $670 to get the creator combo. So it's quite the chunk of change. But you know, if you're gonna spend the money on this camera, I'd really recommend getting that creator combo because it comes with things like, you know, this battery grip or battery handle. It comes with this DJI Mic 2 transmitter. So I think it's a pretty good deal for getting all these extra accessories. And there are even more accessories that you can add on, such as the black mist filter. I think it's an essential thing if you're gonna vlog with this camera and other things like that. So yeah, a lot of considerations with the price going up, but you know, I've been using this camera, like I said, for about a month now to film travel vlogs and videos, and I am so pleased with it. Like in my opinion, this is the camera of 2023. It's the one we've all been waiting for. We didn't know it was gonna finally come this year, but now that it's here, I think a lot of you will come to the same conclusion that I did that this is a really awesome pocket camera, maybe even the best pocket camera on the market right now. But you guys let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm also working on a giant you know, comparison video between this camera, the iPhone 15 Pro, the GoPro Hero 12 Black, DJI Osmo Action 4, and the Sony ZV-1 Mark II. So that video will be coming out tomorrow if everything goes well. So stay tuned and yeah, thanks for watching. I will also have more videos about the Pocket 3 coming out, including a setup guide, an accessory guide, and lots more. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.